welcome to the Church of the Redeemers Weekly Podcast. We pray that you will enjoy this week's service, and we hope that you will follow us at www.cotrb.org, and may God continue to bless you. Come on in here. If you can, just lift your hands and give them thanks today. Glory. Glory, glory, glory. Come on, he's been good to you. Come on, give him praise today. God says that that he inhabits the praises of his people. So I imagine he's here today. Because ever ever since I came in the building, there has been praise going forth. Amen. Amen. Has he been good to you? Man, we bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who is the strength of your life. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for uh, Reverend Langham, uh, Reverend Richardson, and Reverend Pyfram in her absence, and to all these wonderful deacons. Amen. To the officials that are here, and to you, the saints of God. It's just good to be here. Amen. And to this uh, music department and this choir. Y'all, come on, come on. My Lord. If, if, if I wasn't in Norristown, I'd I swing by every Sunday. <laughs> I'd, I'd swing by for praise and worship every Sunday morning. I just believe that if God has been good to you, that you should praise him. I believe that if he is a present help in the time of your trouble, he deserves your praise. Glory. If he has fed you, he deserves your praise. If he has healed your body, he deserves your praise. Glory to his name. To all of you, we just greet you with Jesus' joy. To my lovely wife and uh, my daughter and, and the mother too that are out the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Muff, I don't know why you laughing. You next. Yeah, you got to go. Amen. <laughs> we just <laughs> we just love you today. If you let's get to this word. If you brought your Bibles with you, Amen. I'm gonna ask that you would meet me in the book of Hebrews, the twelfth chapter. Hebrews twelve. Hebrews twelve. And for your hearing, we'll read the first. And the second verse is, amen? Amen. Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. If you need time, just say wait. All right, listen. Go to the table of contents in the front. <laughs> if you got a phone, just scroll till you see Hebrews and press that bad boy. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, and, and it reads this way. It says, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. For who for who for, I'm sorry, the joy that was before him endured the cross, despising the shame, 
and to sit down at the right hand of the throne of God. Lord, I ask that you would decrease me, that you might be increased. Lord, I ask that the seed of your word would fall on good soil. So break up the fallow ground of our hearts that we might be able to receive your word. We acknowledge, Lord, that we need your word. Your word is life. Your word is light to this dying and dark world. And Lord, as you illuminate this word, let us not just be hearers of the word, but help us to wear it. Help us to put it on. Help us to apply it to our life that we might bring you glory with our walk. And I thank you and I praise you in the name of your son who gave his life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And just for a few moments, I would like to talk to you from this thought. Hidden figures. Hidden figures. Amen. Y I know y'all saw that movie. We just got over Black History Month, and I know y'all saw that movie. Y'all saw Taraji P. Hen hey, man. And uh, Octavia Spencer. Uh-huh. And Janelle Monet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good movie. I'm going to tell you, honestly, I never knew anything about Katherine Johnson before the movie came out. Amen. And so just so I can give you a quick reference so y'all, I don't put you to sleep. Amen. Especially if I see some of my students sleeping, you failed. <laughs> Look, if you, if you just expect an F. Amen. <laughs> the, 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 the basis. <laughs> All right, team. Praise God. The, the basis of this movie is um, that these women who were called computers worked at NASA and Langley. And their objective was not just to get man into space, but to ensure that he landed safely. Amen. 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 And so uh, you remember uh, the astronaut John Glenn was preparing the vessel so that he can orbit Earth four times. And the calculations needed to be done in order to make sure he got here in the earth safely. And you know the story. He landed about uh, 800s off the coast of the Bahamas. Amen. And before he left, he said these words to Kevin Costner. He said, listen, if the black girl has the calculations, I'm good. Amen. Y'all remember, they just got that big IBM computer, amen, and they could have put their trust in the computer. But astronaut Glenn said, no, if the black girl, y'all know she was in there with all them white men. Ain't nobody white here, is it? All right, I don't want to talk about it and, and make you feel bad, amen. But it was a room full of white men, and they, man, they even gave her a coffee pot that she had to use that didn't work too well. She had to go to the bathroom on the west end of the campus, amen. And amidst all of that racism and sexism, she was still able to impress John Glenn enough to say that if the black girl has the right calculations, I'm good. Let's go. Let's have it. Today, I pray that you are in knowledge of, once we finish this sermon, that your life has already been calculated. Not to make sure that you land on the earth safely, but that you make it from earth to glory. The projections and the trajections. God has already completed and all you've got to do is ride I, I, I've heard preachers say all the time that whenever you see the word wherefore or therefore you got to check and see what is there for amen so if, if you'll allow me if you back up one chapter it's like a hall of faith Amen. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Noah. By faith, Rahab. By faith, this one. By faith, that one. Amen. I want you to know in order for you to walk with the Lord, it takes faith. 
As a matter of fact, the sixth verse, I believe, of chapter 11 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. And faith is applied in every situation in your life. Faith is applied to every condition of your life. I wish I had a witness in here. We, we going somewhere. I want you to know that without faith, it is impossible to please him. Amen. So it says that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Oftentimes, we believe that those that go on before us are in heaven as like our cheering section. I'm, I'm daring to say that the folks that are in heaven ain't worried about us. They, they somewhere around the throne. Like the angels. And, and, and when the angels uh, experience God, they bow. And they come back up. And by the time they get back up, they think of something else that God done done. And they bow. They bow again. I think that the folks that have gone on before of us has bowed so much that they don't have time to look down on us, to check in on us. But uh, contrawise, they have given us witness to follow. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. Come on. I know y'all Bible readers, amen. It says that we have a great cloud of witnesses. I, I'm just going to say this. If your faith gets shaky, if your faith starts to waver, you've got witnesses that you can go to where you can draw strength. That's not exciting to you, amen? Come on, <laughs> come on, Bible readers, amen. We have witnesses <clears throat> that will give testimony to God's goodness through their faith. Amen. Um, with this cloud of witnesses, the examples that we have, the writer of Hebrews encourages us to move about in our faith in a certain way. It says, let us lay aside every weight, the sin that does so easily beset us. Amen. I'm daring to say, saints, and I know y'all look high and holy. Y'all was in high worship. But guess what all of us still deal with? As long as you wrapped in this flesh, you're going to deal with the condition of sin. The Bible says all have sin. Not y'all have sin with your pseudo-sanctified self. Amen. Always looking at other people and got the answer for them. But I remember Jesus telling his disciples, if you want to remove the moat from your brother's eye, First thing you got to do is take the beam out of yours. Here at the house, we become a little bit too judgmental. Amen. And then we can line up other folks' sins. But when it comes to our own personal sins, we get stupid. Why don't we talk about sin no more? I think money has taken the place. Uh, you know, everybody wants to prosper. Everybody wants to boss up. But in making money, it's a good thing. Go ahead, do your thing. But we forget about our soul. Amen. We, 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 we forget about our spirit that needs to be fed. Now, if anything is deficient in, in being fed, it becomes malnutritious. It becomes sluggish. It becomes anemic. Amen. And the reason why we are in the place we are in, in the household of faith, the reason why we don't see signs and wonders no more, the reason why we don't see folk get healed in our presence anymore is because our faith gets shaky. We don't feed, but one time most of us don't even think of pick, about picking up our Bibles until Sunday morning. I, I don't have to come back, though. You know what I'm saying? Mama, warm the car up just in case. I got to make a quick exit. Amen. <laughs> Amen, lights and walls. Amen. 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 Amen, anyhow. Amen. Because when we really think about it, our sin 
we really haven't been paid what we deserve. If it had not been for the grace of God, that allotted time that he gives you just to get things right in him, we'd be a, a mess in here today. Amen. In the Olympics a long, long time ago, a, a long time ago, not in the 60s, not in the 1800s, but before then, in the Olympic Games, what would happen is that the participants would enter the opening exercises with long, beautiful robes on. Kind of like this. Maybe, maybe not like this, but yeah, I'm glad you're smiling at me, my sister. Amen. They rough. Amen. They, they would have on robes when they entered into the opening exercises so that they can impress the emperor. This is when the Olympic Games wasn't in different cities and different parts of the world. It was only in Rome. And they would come in with their robes on. The emperor. They would show off in front of the emperor. But when the game started, they had to take off the robe because they couldn't perform in the games while wearing their illustrious robes. The word of God says to lay aside every weight. Lay aside every weight. The, those that ran in the marathon had to run light. Y'all ever see how those that run are dressed? They have on things that are tight fitting to their body because as they move, they can't have anything hindering them. Child of God, the reason why you find it so difficult in life is because you have too much weight on you. You, you caring about folks that don't care about you. Amen. You up in the face of friends that are actually foes. You are concerned about what God can and cannot do. And so instead of you running light, you have weight on you. You're carrying too much. You forgot to take off your robe. You think that you have somebody to impress as you run this race. My, my answer to you is that you need to lay it aside. That weight might be a family member. That weight might be a friend that's a foe. That weight might be the job that you're at. And the sin which so easily besets us. Um, uh, I heard Jennifer Lewis say this one time, and y'all forgive me. I hope I ain't rubbing nobody the wrong way. But she said, the longer you sit in poo-poo, the more it stops stinking. You need to know that your sin has to be dealt with. Amen. And as much as you want God to take it away, he wants you to turn it over. As much as you want him to take it away, yes, he can. But he wants you to turn it over. I, I got evidence. I got Bible. Romans 12. I believe it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that you present your body. You, now, I, I mean summa, your corpse, your physical. And most of us are still stuck at the, the place where we say, God, I think I can handle my, my, my physical. No, if you could, you wouldn't be in the condition, in the situation that you're in. We need to lay aside the weight, yes, but the sin also. Glory, glory. Glory. Come on, T. Come on, T. And it says after the comment, it says this. It says, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. As you translate this in Greek, that word run means agon. I'm going to help you today. Agon, which is our word for agony. Amen. I'm sorry, but you're not physically running to impress God. But in your spirit, when you have life and it becomes difficult, it's just like a race. And you have to temper yourself sometimes. You can't run too fast when God tells you that there's a blessing up there. He wants you to run at a steady pace. 
so that you reach a destination as you're supposed to. Amen. The agony in your life has a way of developing your patience today. Amen. Let me submit to you, Job. Amen. Job had all this stuff happen in a matter of hours in a day. Lost his kids and his home and his cattle. God left that wife there, though. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus. Why are you holding on to your integrity? Why don't you just curse God and die? Agony helps you to run on. The more people tell you you can't, you should listen to the confidence that you have in God and not yourself and continue to run. When you show up on Sunday mornings and them folks looking at you because they know what you did, you running, baby. Come on, somebody. When folks got a way of burning you down with their tongue, y'all know that the tongue is a world of fire, right, that no man can tame. And most of us got the problem with the tongue, and the reason why folks don't show up no more is because of your mouth. You keep running, baby. You keep on running. Hey, listen, folks don't understand your, where you at in life. Keep on running. You keep running today. Amen. Now, uh, this is very important to me because I think that sometimes in the house we get things twisted around. The, the word of God says in verse 2, it says, looking unto Jesus. Not the pastor. Not the associate ministers. Not the deacons. Not any officials. Not even to yourself. Looking unto Jesus. The problem we have, deacons, is that too many of us put man in the place where God should be. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The problem is we promote preachers and then when they fall, when we see they fall, we discouraged. We don't want to show. I don't want to go to that church no more because he ain't right. Well, guess what? You ain't right neither. My Bible says, I believe it's Isaiah, that all of our righteousness before the Lord is as filthy rags. Amen. I don't know how my pastor used to say, I don't know how one pile of dirt can tell another pile of dirt that he dirty. <laughs> Come on, dig Yeah, yeah. All of us have sin. All of us do wrong. All of us think wrong. All of us say the wrong things sometimes. And the condition of sin can only be wiped out if you keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Jesus, the one who hung, bled, and died that you might be redeemed. Jesus, the one who got up from the grave. We forget that part of the gospel message, amen. We forget that he got up the third day morning. We also forget that he's coming back. Ah! For a church without spot or without wrinkle, amen. If you want to deal with your sin, you've got to look to Jesus. Calling past at midnight is not going to fix your sin. On the phone with your prayer partner ain't going to fix your sin. You've got to look to Jesus. Watch this. The author and the finisher of your faith. Somewhere along the line, you've come to the place where you've grown in Christ a little bit and you think that you're the one who caused your faith to come into the existence. I think it was Walter Hawkins that sang, I prayed and I prayed until I found the Lord. Amen. Now, the misnomer with that song is that we didn't find him. According to John 15, it says, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And ordained you. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. What God starts, he always finishes. I wish I had a witness in here. I wish I had a witness, somebody that knows that your faith has been started by God. And you believe that he's going to finish what he started. I can't. Let me get to my notes. Wait a minute. What else is here? Amen. 
Amen. The, the one thing I know is that not only did he start and he's going to finish our faith, but we have to realize what it is that he's done for us. It says after that, it says, but for the joy, endure the cross. Song says he could have come down from the cross just to save himself, but he decided to die just to save me. You've got to make that thing personal. Amen. God loved you so much that he made sure you were included as he gave his blood. You hadn't been born yet. You hadn't existed yet. But yet he let you partake of salvation. Being said, he knew that the blood would cleanse you. He endured the cross. He also despised the shame. Y'all remember they were mocking him. Betting on when he was going to die. Betting on his clothing. Amen. Making mockery of him as he hung there. The spike between these two bones on his hand. Amen. Piercing him in his side. Amen. Letting blood and water move from his side. The, the, the nail that pierced his feet. And they mocked him as they hung there. Y'all remember? They put an inscription up over his cross, which made it a little bit different. Amen. That said the king of the Jews. Amen. They draped him in purple. Y'all know he had the crown of thorns thrust and pushed down on his head for you and for me. And in that shameful spot, he became shame so that you don't have to be. I think my brother read it this morning. If you put your belief in Jesus Christ, you will not be ashamed. He took on our shame. And if that's not something to shout about, I guess I better go into the back. We get his gift, the benediction, amen, go and have our communion and leave it at that. But if you can't tell him thank you for giving up his life as a ransom for your sin, if you can't say thank you for the exchange that he made, amen, he took your sin and gave his grace, gave you his mercy, gave you his love. The imbalanced exchange worked in your favor and you sit there looking at me like I'm crazy. Thank you. Despising the shame and is set down set down at the right hand of the throne of God it says real quick and I'm a, and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm serious I'm going to let y'all go amen amen really quick uh, in the old testament priests would minister sometimes 24 hours a day amen and they wouldn't sit down they wouldn't sit down amen and in their ministry, one time a year, the high priest would go behind the veil. They would tie him with a rope, put bells at the bottom of his uniform, just in case the people were not forgiven. Because the priest was the only one who was allowed to go behind the veil. Glory. Amen. The priest was the only one that could go. The high priest was the only one that could go behind the veil. And if the people were forgiven, he would walk out. Praise his name. But if they were not forgiven, the high priest would drop dead where he stood. Thank God I'm not the high priest. <laughs> Thank God you're on your own. <laughs> so, the reason why this is so relevant, the reason why this is so important, is because once Jesus died, 
once he got up from the grave, once he showed himself before his disciples, once he ascended into heaven, the word of God says that he sat down. No more bulls and goats. No more sprinkling blood. As a matter of fact, as he hung on the cross, the testimony that's given in the gospel is that the veil of the temple was rent from top. Glory to it. Was rent. So if it was from the top to bottom, amen, only the hand of God could take it and tear it and expose to us the holiest of holies. No longer do we have to sacrifice animals and throw blood around on the mercy seat. Amen. You are forgiven. Once you ask for it. Hallelujah. Once you go to him and ask for forgiveness, it's done. And now he is sat down at the right hand of God, making intercessions for us on a momentary basis. I wish I had a witness. Maybe this song will help you out. Uh, the song says, the words to this song says, though Satan should buff it. Though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has God regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. Oh, sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sins, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I'll bear it. No more. Praise the Lord, it says. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. And Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be sight, the clouds be rolled back like a scroll, the trumpet shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. Is it well with your soul today? Are you looking to Jesus today? Are you laying aside the weight today? Take off the garments of discontentment and yell, it is well. It is well with my soul. Yes, hallelujah. Is it well with your soul today? I mean, everything ain't all right, but it's well with your soul today. Listen, he's healed somebody in here today. Somebody, he's given you clarity of mind. Amen. And at this time, we're going to open up the doors of the church. There may be somebody here who doesn't know why we're doing all this hollering and screaming over the Savior that has suffered bled and died, that we might have a right to the tree of life. Listen, Romans 10, 13 just simply says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Lord loved you so much that he took away your shame. That he endured the cross for you. And the reason why I say it's for you is because you remember as he was praying in the garden, he said, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. If there's another way we can redeem mankind, let's have it. But he said, nevertheless, we got to thank God for the nevertheless. Amen. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. If there's one today, one, if there's one and you need Jesus, he's here for you. You can give me your hand, but give God your heart today. He's a good God. He's a loving God. He's a kind God. So kind that he didn't attach your sin to you. He nailed it to the cross. You don't have to bear it no more. Praise the Lord.